Hi everyone, it's Kino here. Welcome to the Kino Yoga Show on Miami TV HD. Thanks so much for tuning in and watching. So we're gonna continue on with our exploration of yoga. So if you're new to the practice, this is a really great place to begin. Remember, if you're on social media, you can tweet me a question with the hashtag um, Kino Yoga Miami TV, and I'll be sure to get to your questions. So we're gonna start today's show off with some viewer questions. The first viewer question is, um, do you need any particular diet in order to do the yoga practice first of all you don't need any particular anything to do the yoga practice all you need is you you need your body and you need a flat area if you have a yoga mat that's awesome but if not you can also do it on your carpet if you're just starting off at home you don't need to eat anything in particular when you're just starting off with the practice um, eventually though eventually yoga will start transforming your body and it'll help you feel the inner body once you feel what's really going on deep down in there inside of your body you'll naturally want to treat it better you'll naturally want to really honor your body for the temple that it is for the spirit of yourself and when that happens you'll start to make more intelligent and conscious choices that really respect your body from the inside out so you'll naturally gravitate towards more healthy um, and more nourishing foods and it's really this that's the essence of how yoga transforms you also when you do the postures you begin to really see how foods that are really heavy or foods that are really unhealthy create obstacles inside of the body so the very least or the easiest thing that we can do is just remove those obstacles by not placing them directly inside of the body to start off with. Now after I've been doing yoga for, um, for more than 14 years and when I started the practice I pretty much ate everything and over the last 14 years I've actually decided to follow a vegetarian diet. Now you don't need to do that and you don't need to get scared if you hear that but vegetarian food um, is really congruent with the yoga lifestyle because we have this moral principle um, that is the essence of you know when you commit yourself to yoga and you really do it as a total lifestyle not that you're just trying it off or not that you're just starting but when you know if you want to teach yoga or something like that there's this principle called nonviolence and the aspect of nonviolence means that we should live in as peaceful a way as possible and we shouldn't take or do our best not to take the lives of other beings not to harm other beings I love animals I was always raised um, around you know a lot of dogs and animals and I just really really love them so for me that felt really natural to adjust my diet to not take the lives of other beings now you don't need to make that choice right from the beginning you in fact never need to make that choice but for me it was really important that my dietary choices really reflected this principle of not that is the essence of the spiritual practice of yoga but of course remember if you're just starting off doing the practice then it's you can start anywhere really you can start just from wherever you are no particular diet no particular anything the probably the most important thing that you really need to think about in relation to food is that you don't want to eat right before you practice that's probably the most important thing when you're just starting you don't want to you know, have a really big meal and then start doing all these yoga postures instead you want to give yourself at least an half hour I would say at least a half hour better a full hour before you actually start the practice and the same thing right after even if you get really hungry you don't want to just go and eat right after you want to drink something maybe some nice pure water or some coconut water and just let that um, rehydrate your body and then in a clear balanced state then you could go to have your meal after your practice so I hope that's a really simple answer to that first viewer question and we're gonna move on to the second viewer question and this question involves um, you know how the yoga practice relates to an exercise lifestyle and the question is, does Ashtanga yoga and the practice of it replace cardiovascular activity and a full regimented exercise routine? First of all, you can think of the yoga practice as like the total yoga program, like everything that you need for your whole lifestyle all in one. Because we do this deep breathing with sound, you're actually stimulating the cardiovascular system. Now a question that a lot of people also ask me is do I do anything else? You know, do I go to the gym? Do I do, you know, aerobics and things like this? I only do Ashtanga yoga. I've only done Ashtanga yoga for more than the last four years so everything that I am is this practice I don't do any additional cardiovascular activity of course if there are other activities that you love like you love to run I love to go for a walk on the beach particularly at sunset if you love something like that you can integrate the yoga practice into that also if you're a really dedicated athlete like if you're or, or you're just really into running or biking or something like that yoga will actually optimize your athletic performance you don't need to quit the activities that you already do yoga can enhance what you're already committed to but in the same sense, if you're really inspired by yoga and you want to do yoga every day, that can actually be a total program for your whole lifestyle, including health and exercise, and also including the lifestyle changes that accompany the practice of yoga. 
So if you have some questions, remember to tweet those over to me on social media and we'll get to your questions in our next episode. Today's episode actually comes from another viewer question. Um, so this question also came on Twitter from, a, from one of my followers named Kevin. Thanks for watching and thanks for sending this question. And Kevin's question is, how can you find more balance in the standing postures? And where does balance come from in the standing postures? So today's class is going to be all about balance and the standing postures. So balance is first First and foremost, mm, a state of mind. You never attain balance in something through which your initiation or through which you start off and you will remain imbalanced. So in other words, balance happens when you are calm and steady and peaceful in your approach and that's expressed through your entire movement quality. You don't just suddenly find yourself in a posture and then squeeze things to try to find the balance. The entire body must act as one clear, single synchronized movement and then the mind is steady and calm and then the body is a reflection of that inner state of calm. So in order to attain this balance we're going to start off in a seated position and coordinate our breath with our movement and connect that breath deep down into the core of the body because where is your center of gravity? Hmm? Your center of gravity, well that sits deep down there in your pelvis so you want to catch hold of your center of gravity in order to balance well. So come to a comfortable seated position and we'll tune in to that deep space inside of the pelvis and coordinate our breath with our movement. All right. So first find your navel, your belly button which is right here, down to your pubic bone and then pull in, back and down. So we're going to sort of activate the abdominal muscles. Don't squeeze too hard. Just pull them back like you're squeezing into a tight pair of old jeans, maybe from high school or maybe some of those skinny jeans where you gotta suck it in. So keep that belly squeezed in and then firm the pelvic floor, which is all of the muscles, which are all of the muscles between your sitting bones, between your tailbone and your pubic bone and just draw that into the center. So you should feel like mm, there's a natural lift that comes up out of the pelvis. The spine just naturally raises a little bit and everything's aligned along the central axis of the body when you get that connection. From that space, from that space, the center of the pelvis, control your breath and say saw to yourself on the inhale, ha on the exhale while your lips remain sealed. Let your gaze be down at the floor out in front of you, firm pelvic floor, firm lower abdominal muscles. Inhale. You can follow my hand as you inhale, so you coordinate your breath with my movement, reach the top of your exhalation and exhale. Ha as you exhale, the lips are sealed, firm the abdominal muscles into the body, and then inhale. Nice, long, resonant breath. So by vocalizing the breath, you're going to hear your own breath that should feel and sound like the tide. Reach that inhalation and then exhale. Nice, long, steady exhalation. Firm the pelvic floor, keep the spine lifted up out of the pelvis. Inhale. Nice long inhalation, reach and use your full lung capacity, the spine lifts up, 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 out through the top of the head and exhale. Remember, follow my hand, elongate your breath, pull it in towards the center line. We're going to do one more of these. Inhale. Feel the breath expanding and as the breath expands, the mind expands, creating more balance and more calmness right through the center of our being. Then exhale. And at the end of this exhalation, take your hands into prayer position. With your hands in prayer position, now we begin coordinating our breath with our movement, which will again help you feel more balanced, all right? So root down in the center of the pelvis, draw the sitting bones towards each other, firm the pelvic floor, suck in your lower abdominal muscles. And then inhale as you raise the hands above the head. Reaching out through your fingertips, rolling the shoulder blades down the back, and then exhale. Bring your hands right back to the center of the body. And then we'll do it again. Inhale, raise the hands, saw on the inhale. Use the breath to lift the arms so it's not just muscular work. And keep the lower abdominal muscles squeezed in and reach, reach, reach. And then exhale, roll through the center line as you come back down. Let's give that a few more tries. Inhale, slow and steady. Sigh, saw to yourself as you inhale pressing the arms, elbows completely straight. Don't let this be passive. Reach up, up, up through the fingertips and then exhale. 
slow steady exhalation down through the center line of the body one more time inhale from the root of the pelvis energy travels up the spine straightening your elbows and reach up to the ceiling all the way out through the fingertips and exhale flow through the center line back to your hands in prayer. So this balanced approach to coordinating breath to movement is the essence of how you balance all the standing postures. Just so we can try that out, let's actually come all the way up to standing. So come onto your hands and knees, and then we're gonna get up to standing through the downward facing dog, all right? So grip the fingertips, tuck under the tailbone a little, and press through the arms. Curl your toes under, and then inhale, press, and then exhale, downward facing dog. So let this just warm up your body a little bit and we'll stay here for a few breaths, long and steady and deep, so you can feel your legs pressing down into the ground, really let the legs wake up. And since this is the first downward dog, let's just lean a little over to the left side and then come back into the center and lean a little over to the right side, wiggling your hips over, just to really get a good sense of directionality through the pelvis. Press out through the fingertips and keep sucking in the low belly. Switch your gaze forward, press through the hands, and nice and easy, walk your feet forward, lift your head, look up. And then exhale, pivot forward into your hip joints and go down. Now don't worry about if your head's not all the way down. Even if you're just up to here, just fold forward. Then bend the knees, roll your spine and come all the way up back to the center. So before we begin to balance too much on our legs, let's just see if we can feel the equal distribution of our body weight through the feet. So from here, this is samasthitihi, which is Sanskrit for equal standing posture. This is like a neutral position, but it's actually really active. So we're gonna pull the kneecaps into the pelvic floor, so stand with the base of the big toes together, kneecaps into the pelvic floor, and this is very important to so find the equilibrium point in the pelvis. Suck in the low belly, firm the pelvic floor, and let the energy travel along the central axis of the body. Now, that what is the central axis, you might wonder? Well, it's the central gravitational axis of the body. It's the place where all of your body weight would find its center line. So this is really good for your posture, right? So if you find yourself hanging out like with a slacky posture through the day, or your hips jutting forward, or the shoulder, samasthitihi is the place where you can find your natural balance point in the center of the body. So let's just stay for a few breaths like that. Natural balance center. Find the base of the big toe, the base of the little toe, and the heel, and let that press into the ground. And after that's pressed into the ground, let that create a lift in the soles of the feet so you can feel the arches like lifting inward and upward. Let that go all the way up through the kneecaps and firm the pelvic floor. And then from here, your gaze is soft, the mind is balanced to start off with. And we're gonna do one or maybe two sun salutation A just to get the energy flowing through the body. So here we go. Inhale. The sun salutations bring life and energy into the body. Raise the arms over the head, just like we did from seated. And then exhale. Take your hands through prayer. Pivot through the hip joints. Roll forward. And let's go all the way down. Don't stress. However far down you go is how far down you go. Then inhale. Lift your chest. Look up. And then exhale. Bend your knees. Put your hands flat. Step back. Take the shoulders over the palms. And exhale, bend your elbows, and let's just lower all the way down to the ground. So that's nice and easy. If you're strong and you can do a push-up, you can keep it up here. But for everyone who's maybe working on strength, you can just let the belly rest on the ground. Then push through the arms and lift the chest, roll over your toes, inhale, upward facing dog. And if upward facing is challenging for you, you can put your knees down or even the hips down. But if you can press up, it'll be a little bit better. Then curl over your toes and press back into downward facing dog. Equalize your posture so you can walk your feet in. Take a moment and just get nice and stable. But once you get nice and stable, Find the stability and stay. This is where balance starts. A calm approach to how you practice. Don't try too hard. Don't try too little. Find that sweet spot right in the middle. All right. Press down through the base of the big toes. Shoulders are nice and open. The mind is calm and balanced. Equalize inhalation. Equalize exhalation. And after a few breaths here to find the balance, look forward and let's just walk those feet forward. Lift your chest, look up. And exhale, fold forward, go down. Remember, don't care how far down you go, 
however deeply bend, that's how deeply bend. Then lift your head and look forward, press through your feet, inhale, roll all the way up, raising the hands above your head, and exhale, return all the way back up to the front. Good. So now we're ready for our first standing posture, all right? You want to make sure that you orient forward, that there's enough heat and fire in the body, all right? Now the best way to work on the standing postures, again, is to feel the weight distribution from one side of the body to the other. Now the easiest balancing posture um, is when we're going to lift one leg at a time. In Sanskrit, this is called Uttita Hasta Padangvishtasana. So we'll move on to the left side and let's just take our feet a little bit hips width apart, although traditionally you would start in that Samastiti position. Today we're going to start with the feet hips width apart. Now before we go on to lifting, I just want us to rock side to side like this. So start off neutral, firm the pelvic floor, don't hike your hips and let's just rock over to the left side and then rock over to the right side. And you can gaze just gently out ahead and do this like you're steering your car and your car is your body and you want to grab the steering wheel from your pelvis. So steer the pelvis to the left, steer the pelvis to the right. Nice and easy. Now this time steer the pelvis to the left and stay oriented on the left. Move both hands to your natural waist. Bend your right knee out in front. All right. So as soon as you bend the right knee, you should feel the left leg completely solid and strong. Don't worry about um, locking your knee. If your knee is not hyperextended, you can actually do that by pressing into the base of your big toe. And if you hyperextend your left knee, press into the base of the big toe to keep it equal and balanced. Now, inhale, lift your right leg. Reach down, hold on to your shin. And let's get nice and stable here. We're just going to do this right from here. Gaze straight out ahead. Lock your gaze at a single point. Don't look around. Don't, if, if possible, don't even look at me after you take the posture. Just take that gaze straight out ahead. Lock your lower pelvis. Lock the lower belly. Keep it all nice and steady. This balance is steady and firm. Staying here for a few breaths. Make sure that the leg lifts itself. So don't try to do all the work with the arm. Then, if you have the balance, let's reach down and hold on to your big toe. Nice and stable here. If it was really stressful, don't reach down for the toe, just grab back onto your shin again. And then we'll take a few breaths here again, reach around, hold on to that shin. The balance is all right here, inside of the pelvis, pressing down into the standing leg. Then inhale, and as you exhale, move your right hip out to the side as you externally rotate your right hip joint. And again, staying steady and balanced. If you notice, there are some movements through my left foot. So I'm constantly refinding the center line or reconnecting this with the center line by pressing through the base of the big toe, base of the little toe, and the heel. If that out to the side is easy for you, you can hold on to your big toe, but don't let your sitting bones pop up. Then inhale back to the center. From wherever you are, take both hands to your natural waist. All right, now from here, this is a test of strength and balance. Inhale, lift your leg. And remember, even if your leg is only this far off the ground, it's still working. Just pull the leg up as high as you can. Three, nice and steady. Four, and five. Did you feel that quadricep burning? Mine was burning, so I hope yours was burning too. And remember, burning, that's a good sign. That's like purification. That's to those are toxins leaving the body, weakness leaving the body. So you better try the other side just to make sure that we're nice and balanced, all right? So starting off with your feet hips width apart. Find that center through the pace of the pelvis, through the lower stomach pulling in, and then let's just mm, lean over to the right. So no effort on that, we're just leaning over to the right. Move your hands to your natural waist and then point your left foot out in front. Press down through the base of your right big toe, base of the, left, the little toe, and the heel. Pick a spot that won't move, all right? So if you've got a dog running around at home, don't look at the dog. Look at a spot that won't move, all right? Straight out in front, and then inhale, lift your leg by pulling your leg into the center line, and then hold on to to your shin. Nice and stable here. Start off with your foot pointed and then flex your foot as though the heel is drawing in towards the pelvis. After you get stable here, reach down. Hold on to your big toe. Find yourself aligned right through the center and we'll hang out here. All right, so balance is a state of mind. So this state of mind has to be equanimous, happy and free. If you find yourself stressing, like if you're stressing over this, just take it easier. Hold the knee, no problem, all right? Now let's see if we can take that leg to the side. Inhale, firm the pelvic floor. Exhale, pivot over to the side. Start off with your foot pointed and then flex. And if you can flex, reach down. 
hold on to your toe and keep it out to the side. Super important, the sitting bones stay at the same level. Do not hike your left hip. Don't try to orient towards the goal. Just be balanced and focused in the task at hand. And then inhale, roll your knee back towards the center. Take both hands onto your natural waist and then inhale. Lift your left leg by firming your pelvic floor. Feel that quadricep nice and firm. Let it be on fire. Or stay here for a few breaths. Remember, even if your leg's just down there, keep lifting, 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 lifting. And one day, it'll come up. Exhale all the way down. Nice and easy. So that's how we find the balance through the pelvic floor. When you're ready to take it to another level, I'll show you where that comes. And if, you're, if that was easy for you, welcome to try this along with me, all right? Transferring the weight onto the left side, hold your hands to your natural waist. If the balance is easy for you, inhale, go immediately to your big toe. And now, to challenge yourself and your balance even more, inhale, straighten your leg and point your toe. So this is the place where the balance is really challenged because we have our leg far out from the center line. And then if you want to challenge your balance even more, inhale, and as you exhale, fold your chest down towards your knee. Nice and steady. And then inhale, come all the way up. So remember, if that was really too advanced, go back to holding on to your knee. And then keeping the leg straight if you can. Inhale. Exhale, bring it over to the side and stretch all the way out through your right toes. Finding the balance here, you'll notice that I'm moving my pelvis over to the left to compensate for the opening of the right leg. Be sure to do that too. Rolling the hip joint back to the center. Exhale, test out the balance to fold forward again. Inhale, lift your head, hold on. And we'll try that again to lift the leg and exhale down. Okay, I'll show you the other side. Transfer the weight onto the right side. Inhale, reach down. Stretching out your leg. Remember, balance is first and foremost, so if you don't have the balance, don't try to fold forward, okay? Just nice and steady. Pull back a little with the arm, pull the hip into the center line, and point when you can. Then exhale to challenge the balance, fold in towards the center line. Take a few breaths here, and then inhale, take it back up. Firm the pelvic floor, slow and steady, move it out to the side, press down, compensate by moving the pelvis a little bit more towards the right as you reach out through that left foot, your right hand stays on the waist, roll the thigh back towards the center, challenge your balance even more, exhale, fold again. Inhale, take it up, and hold. All right, so that's what you're going for. So remember, if that's challenging, just stay holding, holding the knee, no problem. And then exhale, all the way down. Okay, so that was a hard posture. Um, balancing postures should be hard because they challenge how you feel. They challenge, you know, can you do it? So if you notice yourself thinking, oh man, I can't do this, that was so difficult. I feel you, I felt just like that in the beginning. I was jumping all over the place. And then what happens is as your mind becomes calmer, the body becomes calmer and everything integrates to a greater level of strength, okay? So with that in mind, we'll see if we can move on to another standing posture that will help you feel even more aligned along the central axis of the body and is maybe even a little bit easier. So this posture, um, we're gonna start off, it's called tree posture in English, all right? So move your weight onto the left side, press down through the base of your left big toes, and then find your pelvic floor. Externally rotate your right hip joint to protect that right knee, and then reach down. Hold on to your ankle and flex your left foot and the right foot. Flex the right foot. Press the heel to the inner space of the inner thigh. Tuck under the tailbone and your hands in prayer. Look gently down and we're going to take five breaths here, okay? As you're here, feel the small movements in your left foot. That's the essence of balance. So what looks like balance from the outside is often a lot of work on the inside. Do the work through the inner body. Feel yourself steady and calm, all right? And if you notice your ankle getting fatigued, this is part of what actually heals the ankle, okay? So now, just to test out the balance, let's raise the hands above the head. And you can gaze straight out ahead or you can shift your gaze just a little bit up. Keep your balance point, and then exhale. Let's bring those hands all the way down. And now, just to test out the balance even more, 
firm your pelvic floor and press your heel into the inner thigh and that's just going to bring the right knee out to the side sucking all the way in and just gazing down five more breaths like this feel your ankle getting fatigued on the left side that's exactly what needs to happen your ankles got to get stronger so if you're someone like I am who really likes to wear high-heeled shoes being flat on your heel will require mm, a lot of effort so be sure to do balancing postures like this every day so that your foot stays balanced healthy and alive for your whole life okay I think that was good enough so drop the hands down and exhale down Ooh, some burning sensations through that left ankle that's good don't be afraid of those all right again that's healing the ankle you better do the other side so transfer that weight over to the right side firm the pelvic floor move the left hip joint into external rotation so that's what the knee points out to the side and then we're going to close the knee joint okay so gently walk up and if your foot only gets to your knee that's no problem you can do it just right from there reach down hold on to your ankle if you can and press the left heel into the right inner thigh press down through the base of your right big toe tuck your tailbone a little under make sure the knee points to the side then switch your gaze straight out ahead lock it on target calm steady balanced and clear hands in prayer relax your shoulders right nothing to hold on to with the upper body just let the energy travel through the central axis of the body don't fight with your arms don't push too hard just be here and let balance be an expression that goes through the whole body this open state of consciousness this open mind is the essence of the yoga practice just to challenge that a little bit more inhale raise the arms straightening them up and if you can you switch that gaze up and stay here for a few moments let your right ankle really work press down through the base of your right big toe find the center line Ooh, almost lost it there for a moment and then feel the inner arch of your right foot really raising to test out the balance even more press through the left heel firm your pelvic floor be nice and stable the more you press down the more the energy rises up and take the right hand down and the left foot down and just maybe give yourself a little side to side motion now if that was easy for you there's always a place to go a little bit deeper so if you're ready to try this out take your weight back onto your left leg externally rotate your right hip and come into tree now if tree was hard for you just repeat tree and we're going to just do that nice and easy all over again so the hands in prayer now if your knee feels okay your foot feels good and you've got a good sense of balance reach down with both hands and slide your right foot across the center line of the body so you can come into a half lotus position hold on to your half lotus with the left hand and then reach your right hand around and hold on to your elbow all right nice and stable here let's just look forward and test out the balance from here since you since everything is a little more um, rotated this is a harder posture and it requires a more deep external rotation of your right hip joint if you want to test out your shoulders also reach down and see mm, can you hold your lotus foot don't worry if you can't hold on that took me a while to really get that flexibility so we'll just start off from here keep holding on to the elbow and now here's the real test of the balance fold forward look down at the floor oh it looks far away and then slowly slowly dangle the left hand dangle the right hand take your hands fingertips forward then drop your head then walk the hands back towards your foot and if you can exhale down do not bend your left knee stay here press through your right foot and if you have the easy balance lift your right hand off and see if you can hold on to that lotus foot nice and stable feel that left foot really really working this is so good for the legs then gently release inhale look up if you can see through your hair and then <laughs> exhale firm your pelvic floor dangle the arms hold on to your lotus foot take it back around and all the way down well I fell out of that one maybe you did too I'll better luck on the other side maybe a ponytail is gonna help me on this one so um, if your hair is in your face like mine was then probably a ponytail would be a, a good idea yeah, if you're doing the postures um, generally to keep you know hair out of the face let's try the other side okay take the weight onto the right foot and then externally rotate the left hip joint bring it up and up all right and remember if your knee feels bad then don't go past this just stay again in the tree and we're working on the balance reach down hold on to your foot bring it into an easy half lotus then make sure that your left knee points down to the ground so if your knee is up here please don't fold forward just work on the balance reach around hold on to your elbow look straight ahead steady 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 and then fold maybe ooh, we got to take the foot so holding on to the foot 
And then let it go for a moment, especially if this is the first time you try. Then fold into that right hip joint, look down, dangle your arms, fingertips touch first, drop your head down, walk your hands back, and fold into your hip joint. Stay here for a few breaths. When you can or you want to try, reach around and see if you can hold your foot. Then let it go, nice and steady through your pelvic floor. Inhale, look up. Find a spot, look at that spot, transfer your weight onto your fingertips, and then inhale nice and steady, hold on to your foot, and then all the way back down. That was better. You definitely have to see where you're going in balance, so if you're in a blindfold and you can't see anything, you'll probably lose your sense of balance, all right? So, now our standing postures have been pretty stable. I'd like us to get back down to the floor and just integrate that work a little bit. So if you'll start off at the front of your mat. Inhale, raise your hands above the head, pressing the palms together, and let's reach up. And then exhale, fold forward, bend into your hip joints. Let's go all the way down. Inhale, again, lift your chest, look up. Exhale, bend your knees, take the palms flat, step your legs back, nice and easy. Palms down, shoulders over the palms. Exhale, bend your elbows, let's just go to the floor. Inhale, chest up, press through the arms. Roll through, look up. Exhale, roll over your toes, go back. Now from here, walk your feet forward, bend the right knee, bend the left knee, and then let's just sit all the way down. So another really important thing when we're working on any balance is to make sure that we have the flexibility for those postures that are at hand. So tree posture is just like another posture called John or Shirsasana A position, right? So if we start off in the seated version of Samasthitihi and we bend that right knee out to the side and we fold all the way in, that looks just like tree position, right? So some of you may have your knee raised really high or if your knee is low to the ground, that means you have the flexibility. If your knee is raised really high, that means your hip is tight. So of course, when, it, when any posture is tight, it's not gonna be as balanced and free. So this is a great posture to help align the standing postures deeply as you can. So let's fold forward, orient your sternum forward, reach your hands all the way around, inhale, let's look up, and then exhale, nice and easy, just fold forward. And don't worry about keeping your spine super straight, just relax your body down, keeping the low belly sucked inside, firming the pelvic floor, soft and steady breathing, soft and steady through the mind. Keep that resonant breath, so even though I said soft and steady breathing, we still want that deep, resonant breath. Feel yourself sort of becoming more and more aware of the inner body as we're here. And then inhale, straighten the arms, let's look up. And then exhale, let's release. And we're gonna nice and easy do the other side. So come back to that straight forward position. Turn the left knee out to the side. Bring it all the way in. The left heel is gonna press into the right inner thigh. And then orient the sternum forward. And then fold, fold, fold. And then reach the hands around. And if you can't reach the hands, a lot of people can't reach the hands, you can take your hands right on the floor, say on the outside of your knee, right onto the shin. And then maybe you can hold onto the outside of the toes like this. From wherever you are, fold forward as though you initiate the movement from the hip joint as much as possible. You want to avoid just kind of hunching and rounding down. Create the length through the control of the inner body. Does that make sense? So now forward, 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 and then whichever version is your deepest, pivoting through the hips and down. Settle into the posture and feel that balance from the inner body, feel the core nice and engaged and the breath is long, equanimous, and deep. After a few breaths, inhale, let's straighten the arms, and then exhale, release your hands, turn forward to the front of your mat, and we'll go nice and easy, back and forth. Pull the knees in and the feet underneath, hands forward, and let's just step all the way back, shoulders forward, and exhale, lower down. Inhale, roll forward to upward facing, exhale, roll over your toes, downward facing. Now from here, look forward again, step the right foot forward, left foot forward, sit all the way down, and bring yourself straight forward again. Now, we'll do a simple forward bend with both legs in the same position to make sure we have the hip flexibility, all right? Suck in the belly and reach forward, and this is a nice, deep, relaxing movement. This will be one of the last things that we do today. And if you can't go all the way forward again, just holding onto your toes, holding onto your shins, taking the hands down and pivoting through the hips as much as possible to find that way forward. All right, settle into the posture, firming the pelvic floor. Inhale, let's look all the way up. 
and then exhale, release. Just roll the spine straight down from here and we'll give the legs a little bit of relaxation, a little bit of nice and ease. Turn the palms upward and easy, close the eyes. Let your breath be easy, let go of any stress. So the idea with the yoga practice is that you are balanced and sort of happy when you start and then that's expressed through the vehicle of the postures and that when you end the practice you have more energy, more balance, more happiness you could say. And this is something that's traditionally stated in all of the yoga philosophy that we have a, a happy disposition after we've been practicing yoga for a while. I have to give your body a few moments of rest, wiggle your fingers and toes, bend your knees and your elbows, lie here for a moment, pull the knees into your chest, squeeze it in. Take a moment here, this is a really healthy posture just to work on the hips. So if you hold on to your wrist and you pull your knees actively into the chest, that can help the hips really equalize. Rocking side to side is also helpful. Then roll on to your right side and let's come all the way back up to a comfortable seated position. All right, so remember, what can balance in the yoga practice teach you about your life? Where are places in your life where you are imbalanced? What is the movement initiation pattern that you do? Do you overactivate? Do you try too hard? Do you tense too much? Or do you not try enough? What are the keys to help you retain balance? Do your practice and use the postures as a mirror so that you can know yourself better. And then when you get to the next life situation that demands that you are more balanced and more present and more compassionate and more awake, then you will be that person. And this is the way yoga really makes you a, you know, a better person. It makes the whole world a calmer and happier place. One day I hope everyone will practice yoga every day all over the whole planet of Earth. And then we'll have a yoga planet. And then everyone, well, this is my dream. And you might think it's a little naive, but uh, if you experience the benefits of the practice, then hopefully you'll be a part of that change that I believe is coming. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to do your practice every day. Namaste.